Rock Solid Wrestling makes its way back down the Mile of Gold and returns to Kirkland Lake, Ontario for the first time in four years. Saturday night, August 19th, live from the Northern College Athletics and Wellness Center, it's a night of fights in support of community living Kirkland Lake. Featuring Canadian heavyweight champion Scotty the Body, Cody Diener, Crystal Moon, Tornado, and more. Get your tickets online at rocksolidwrestling.tickit.ca or in person at the Pronto Store on Taylor Avenue. Rock Solid Wrestling is back in Kirkland Lake, Saturday, August 19th. Don't miss it. Hey guys, this is Tyson Kidd, and you're listening to Count It Out with Mike and Tyler. Bulldog's gonna win, whether he wants to or not. Well, we are live, pals, and welcome to another edition of the Bill After Sealed of Approved Count It Out with Mike and Tyler. My name is Tyler, and I am joined by Hard Mike. I hate saying that. It makes me feel <laughs> disgusting. What's going on, have, brother? I didn't have any hard like uh, of that stuff today either, so I made my own. <laughs> it's the most welfare drink you'll ever have. It's uh, it's Soda Stream brand Sprite with rum. So we'll see. We'll see how how uh, how I act with this in me. Well, in that case, we better get the important stuff out of the way mm-hmm. early here. Uh, today I will be. You know, we're getting close to uh, the All In pay per view, which is going to be this weekend, I think. Actually, mm-hmm. believe it. No, next weekend. I don't know. Whatever. It's in a week I or two. Know. But uh, Wembley Stadium, AEW is doing some big things. So Mike and I decided that we're going to kind of pay homage to some some Wembley Stadium stuff this that's, week. That's homage. Whatever. Oh, oh, I want to hear you say it. Homage. No, I'm sticking with what with, I'm with saying. With the flair at the end. Homage. No, homage. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to be counting down the top seven career moments of the British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith. Before that, though, Mike and I are going to have a little bit of fun, and we're going to take a look at the last time there was a big wrestling show at Wembley Stadium, which would have been SummerSlam 1992. The real Wembley Stadium, by the way. SummerSlam 1992. And uh, we're going to rebook it, how we think it should have been booked. So that'll be kind of fun. Mike has been struggling and stressing, <laughs> making his rebooking. I did mine in 10 minutes. And exactly. I There's a difference between be you and I. Yeah, There's a mine... difference between you and I. I want mine to be good. Ah uh, well, we, we'll, <laughs> we'll we'll put a poll up at the end, and we'll see. You guys can tell us. Leave a comment below of whose card you like better, and don't just say Mike because you guys hate me. All right. <laughs> I guarantee we'll be getting votes for you, like like against you from Rob, for sure. Well, that's just to be had. Yeah. Um, good Walsh goes back and forth. Yeah, that's fair. He yeah. heals on both of us. Yeah. It's you know who true. else Rob is going to be voting for? And if you know, you know Rob, which is our new thing, which I love. But uh, Rob is going to probably have two big thumbs up uh, for this Saturday, August the 19th, when Northland, Northland, wow, I'm reading way ahead in my notes, when <laughs> I'm reading at the Northern College. Mm. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. Rob, if you know, you know, <laughs> is going to have two thumbs up on August the 19th when Rock Solid Wrestling will be at Northern College, is what I was trying to say the first time, for punches, pile drivers, and pinfalls, a night of professional wrestling in support of community living in Kirkland Lake. Uh, it has been so fun working with Rock Solid Wrestling to promote this yeah. show. A couple great interviews we had. Go check it out in the archives with Tyler Turva, and then last week with Crystal Moon, uh, the, the panda, Kung Fu Panda Crystal Moon, that is, <laughs> which was a fun chat. And we may even have a spin-off podcast where we talk about X-Men. I don't know, but that was pretty <laughs> awesome. Uh, Crystal was a great time, and, and she's excited for the show, and I think we're all excited for the show. 
And let me tell you, man, we're not done with rock solid wrestling. They're going to keep putting on shows and we're going to keep talking about them. Yeah. We love, we love our family at rock solid. Uh, one of these days we'll pop into a rock solid show. I promise you that. But, uh, how can you not love rock solid when they have people like Tyler Turva and, and crystal moon, who is just a sweetheart. I, I, I wish I was able to jump on that on an interview with you. I, I'm sorry I missed it, but it was a really fun interview. Great, great showing by both of you. Um, one of my favorite moments with Crystal, though, is is just so simple for me. Now we've seen we've seen Crystal at a few shows. Got to watch her wrestle a, a phenomenal match that you talked about on the podcast uh, at uh, Crossbody Wrestling in that amazing four way she had. But. It was when you and I went to our very first Destiny show. And Crystal was there as a... She wasn't even there working. She was there as a fan. She was just sitting in the crowd with uh, with her boyfriend. And we walked up and, and she waved us over. And we stood there and talked to her for a good... Felt like like half hour, hour. You know what I mean? And, and we really got to see the, the, the non-wrestler, the human side of of, uh, of Crystal Moon, which, which is a really fantastic experience for us. Um, so to to want to keep working with her, with Crossbody, with Rock Solid, hopefully she does more work with uh, with Barry. It, it's always a good thing. Yeah, and you know you mentioned Destiny Wrestling, and I want to talk a little bit about Destiny Wrestling right now. They have a huge card uh, also this Saturday, August the nineteenth, which uh, mm-hmm. I will be at for sure. We're still waiting to see if you're going to be there or not. Uh, I don't want to run through the whole card, but I want to talk a little bit about some of the matches that are going to be on it. Uh, the big main event here, we're going to crown a new Destiny Heavyweight Champion. Uh, the injured Steve Macklin had to rel- relinquish his title. So mm-hmm. we've got uh, Alex Kane, the current MLW Heavyweight Champion, I believe. Yep. Uh, big sure. Damo, formerly known as Killian Dane from NXT yeah. uh, and the WWE. Uh, AEW superstar Lance Archer and former WWE NXT superstar Trent Seven going to go out in a fatal four way match for that. Title. I'm sorry, did you say former? Is Lance Archer not with AEW anymore? I didn't say former, did I? Oh, I I'm sorry, I, I missed. I, I maybe you did. Maybe yeah, I missed you. Okay, I might All have. Right. I might not have. I don't know. Is 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 uh, the Murder Hawk? Is he bringing uh, Jake Roberts with him? Uh, no, is Jake, that thing? Jake Roberts is doing his own Canadian tour at the end of the That's month. That's true. He is. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be a good time. I'm looking uh, forward to this show, man. Uh, r- a lot of cool stars. Um, the GCW family is going to mark out because we got the second gear crew there. Got the the one they call Manders uh, uh, repping up. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this show. Yeah, they're going to be facing uh, the Calling, who are the current MLW Tag Team Champions. That's going to be a great one. Uh, Jody Threat going to be on the card uh, defending the, uh, the championship there against... Uh, uh, can, I can never pronounce her name. Kylan. Right? Kylan Ky- King. Kylan King, yeah, got some uh, imp- impact wrestling flair going to be there. W- listen, that's great because originally that was supposed to be Deanna Perazzo, and she uh, and for whatever reason she uh, couldn't make the show. What a great replacement for Deanna! Yeah, she Kylan's really been stepping up that tag team with 100%. her and Tara Wilde have been amazing. Yeah. Um, what's really cool about this show too? It's like if like if you just take a look back and you and you see you know mlw's on this card impact wrestling's on this card aew's on this card AEW, yeah. former former wwe superstars are on this card like and then you mm. have some of the best that the ontario scene has to offer exactly like a match i'm really looking forward to is alexi nicole against rajan husher 100 percent, 100 percent. we see the we see both of them at barry all the time i've never seen them wrestle together so it's gonna, this is a this is a fun match. Yeah, well, they've got a fun little angle going here. You know, Alexia laid him out with a pile driver uh, a few shows back when he was just doing security, and you know he cost her the ladder match at the last show by cracking her over the head with the painting. So a lot on the line here. Uh, you anyone that listens to our show knows how big of a fan we are of both of these people, uh, Rajan and Alexia. They're both staples up in Barry as well, and I'm really excited for this one. But to me. The match that I'm most excited about is uh, Gabriel Fuerza defending that new era championship against Judas Icarus. Yeah, I I think these guys have all the potential in the world to steal the show. Uh, obviously, we've talked about Gabriel Fuerza until our face is blue of how incredible <laughs> he is. Uh, Judas, I've seen him wrestle a couple times up in Barry. This kid is unreal. He can bring it, and th- this is, could be the match of the night. Sean Gibson has recently called Gabriel Fuerza the goat of Barry wrestling. 
Okay. And that's, that's strong words. That's saying something. That's a statement right there. But I'm going to one up that man. If he's the goat of bear wrestling, he is, I'm going to go, go ahead and say that right now he is the current best thing going on the indie scene in Ontario. It's tough to argue, man. You tough really to argue. A guy that could give him a run for his money, though, is Tarek. Tarek is putting on incredible stuff all the time. And we're going to see him. This is a match I'm really excited about, too, going up against uh, recently returned to Impact Wrestling, Jake Something. And I, I'm looking forward to that big time. I love me some Jake Something. Uh, that sh- that shirt you stole from me a couple weeks ago, uh, that that's going to be making an appearance at that Destiny show because we got Jake Something and Dan the Dad both on that T-shirt and both on that card. Yeah, so maybe Dan- I'll... Maybe I'll get that signed. Dan the Dad going to be in a triple threat match there with Cody Lang mm. and uh, Shaza McKenzie. And uh, you know, now the... that... oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, and, and lastly but not least, the fatal four way match with Jesse Bieber, Vaughn Vertigo, Tyler Hill, and one of my personal favorites, Jack Williams. Uh, I didn't know you were big into Jack Williams. All right. Good luck. Oh, love me some Millennial Falcon, yeah. man. Love Jack. Well, me, Jack's, me too. Me too. Jack's a great guy. I've had a lot of good conversations with him Very on a bunch nice of guy. these shows. Yeah. Super nice guy. He recently did some training with uh, Tyson Kidd and Natty up in the, yeah, the right. new dungeon, as did Rashawn Husher as well. He was up there a couple weeks ago. And just like our friend Crystal Moon, I do believe he is a uh, uh, he is a baby of the uh, crossbody uh, uh, training facility. I don't know if he's cross. I think he's a rip guy. I think he might be a rip impact guy. Yeah, you might be right because there was a. It's hard to tell. It's hard to keep track sometimes because Rip and Ben were inter promoting their trainees a lot, so it got really confusing of who trained who. But I think you're right. I think he's a rip guy. So whether you're in Northern Ontario or Southern Ontario, it's a great day on Saturday, August nineteenth. Between Rock Solid Wrestling and between Destiny Wrestling, it's gonna be good stuff. And there's one more guy that could really give uh, give. Where's our run for his money for the greatest in the scene right now? Me? But I'm not going to say his name. I'm going to say his name next week because he's the guy we're going to be talking to on September the 9th, live at Back to School, right in front of that Barry crowd, uh, our very first ever live show. We have our guest lined up. We're just not going to tell you who it is till next week. So you got to tune in. If you guys were at Camp and Fest, you know. But uh, next week, we will announce who, to all you guys, like Mike said, will be joining us on September the 9th for the very first edition of Countdown with Mike and Tyler live. We will be live, pals, on August and, the 9th. And, 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 and this isn't like uh, Counted Out After Dark, okay? I promise. It's got it's, it's nothing like that at all. No, oh, Tyler. No, Tyler. I will be wearing <laughs> pants. You are correct. <laughs> or will I? Oh. Yeah, that's for next week, though. That's... Uh, this week we got a lot of stuff to talk about and get to. Yeah. Um are we doing news this week? Because the only news that, that's out this week, I I I don't want to get into because I'll just you're first of all, you're not allowed to yell. Um, you have company over. Fair. Um, but I feel like my yelling will come out of your 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 headset and everybody will hear it because talk about uh, CM Punk. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what? Let's talk about it a little bit. I, I'm I've got I've got oh. two different takes on it. Um I was finally starting to slowly get back in AEW because of the uh, MJF Cole stuff, because of the because of the Jack Perry stuff. There, there, there's things going on, and in, in, in even the Christian Cage stuff. There's things going on in AEW that has me interested again, and I'm slowly jumping on the train. And shit like this happens, and I don't want to even give them my attention. It sucks. So how much of this stuff out here with Punk do you think is? Real, how much of it do you think is coincidence, and how much do you think of it as punk being a dick? Well, it's a hundred percent of punk being a dick. It always is. Every everybody says punk's a dick. <laughs> it's, that, 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 Even his friends you, say that. So. Exactly. You chose the wrong words there. But the rest, the rest of it is all. It's all. Who knows? I I, I don't know. We'll never have the straight answer to that because you can read. One person talk about, oh, this is exactly what happened. This is what happened. This is what happened. Then you read somebody else. Another source in the AEW uh, locker room says something that's a complete 180. It happens all the time. My problem, I honestly don't fucking care if it's Punk's fault, the Elite's fault, uh, anybody. I don't care. I really don't care. All I know is that Tony Khan needs to get his shit together. Um when asked about it at a press conference a couple of days ago, he said the only thing I guess he could say, and that's what I have nothing to say. 
Because what do you yeah. say? To to because to me, if I'm Tony Khan, I'm embarrassed. If I'm Tony Khan, I would just say I will be. I have addressed these matters in private, and they will stay in private. But it, not just but, like, no, oh, it was a great show. But, we did, but, I but thought t- it was a great show. Yeah. Now Tony's got Tony's got to get his shit together. Like 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 because he's doing he's doing certain things so right. Okay, there's something. There's certain things he he's hitting on all cylinders. He's, I mean, like him or hate him, or like like or hate the fact they are about to put on the biggest professional wrestling show in years. Yeah, uh, and, and actually, that, and, maybe the legitimate biggest wrestling show of all time. Yeah. No, but I mean, if you're going by actual numbers, like if you're going by the ticket sales, this this is the the biggest wrestling crowd ever so we'll so we'll see if the show's any good but yeah, I mean, uh, have you have you seen the updated card yeah it looks decent it's okay i, I but, mean it's not but, it's but not, I, well, I, it's I, not I, knocking I, my socks off but i'm not one to get excited over aw stuff so i like here's the thing though and i'm gonna say something that is gonna surprise a lot of people i'm going to watch the show well i would be surprised i'd be more surprised if you didn't watch the show in all honesty really yeah, just because it's 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 a big show. It's AEW. It, it, it's Wembley Stadium. It's I don't give I don't give a fuck if it was a if big it show. For, yeah, if I don't like the promotion, why would I spend my money on it? Or I'm not going to be spending my money on it. Let's, no. let, let, let's be honest. I'm not paying for the show. But why would I spend my time on it? My time my time is more valuable than money these days. Mm-hmm. Okay, between my kids, my job, my you know uh, trying to get shit shit done. Mm. I don't have time for a three hour, four hour wrestling show. I don't. It's AW. So it's like five minutes. <laughs> so if I'm going to spend time watching a show, it's going to be something I I, I like. If it wasn't for the current storylines with MJF and, and Cole and, and the stuff that's actually having me interested, if they were still doing the storylines they were doing six months ago, I wouldn't be watching one, the Wembley show. I wouldn't. I'm interested to see it. I, I want to see it. I think the crowd's going to be phenomenal for it because it's the UK and they're always crazy. Uh, I feel Let me like... tell you something, though. For the main event, Adam Cole is going to win, whether he wants to or not. Oh God! <laughs> I gotta, I gotta make sure that that's a, this is in our show at some point. Um, I also I want to go back to Tony Khan for a minute. Jericho said something on his podcast that I just thought was absurd. That he was Tony Khan was pissed that one of the matches didn't get rated five stars by Dave Meltzer. Who gives a fuck? Thank you. And this is another also, one. Of my, and, and, and that 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 just that just makes him look stupid. Why are we by, putting, by why are we putting our main event guys on the pre-show? Oh my god, how dumb is that? That might be the dumbest thing. Like I and I'm sure that they're gonna do some sort of angle Can or you something. Imagine if somebody gets hurt. Could you imagine at WrestleMania this year? They're like, hey, you know what, Cody and Roman, <laughs> Cody and Roman, you guys yeah, got a tag yeah. team. You guys are going up against. Uh, they, you guys are going up a... against the tag team that nobody knows about yeah. on the AEW. Like the, the the Ring of Honor tag team champions are not well known names. You know, like like they are. <laughs> like like this, they're respected. They're great is, talent. But this is in 19, 1998, Stone Cold Steve Austin is facing Gangrel on Heat yeah. or right before WrestleMania. <laughs> Like I don't get this one. I you know I I and if it leads to an angle, so be it. But I I just think that they don't need to do this. It's unnecessary. Really dumb. Really uh, dumb. I don't get that one. Going back to the punk stuff because I I didn't put my piece in on that either. If he's getting people kicked out of the building, like you said, Tony, get your shit together, punk. Yeah. Like what the fuck? I I didn't disagree with him on the Jungle Boy stuff. If that was a thing where Jungle Boy wanted to use real glass in a backstage skit and it was Punk and Tony Schiavone and where where my where my problem lies here is again this is where Tony needs to get his shit together yeah. it's the it's the it's the image running the asylum because from what i read the reason that Punk interjected is cuz Punk said that Collision is his show and that you're not doing that if you want to do this shit you go on you go down to Wednesday nights and you do that shit there yeah, I, I I didn't hear him say it was his show. I heard it. Well, I heard well, the appar- Wednesday night. Line. Apparently that that has been a that's been a thing for several weeks. Several weeks. Yeah. It's been. It, this is known as Punk's show. Hey, that's not Punk's fault. That's Tony's fault for telling him that this is your show. Yeah, Tony Khan this get is, together. This man. Is, and we said this too many times, man. This this is giving me WCW vibes, and it's not good. 
Well, something that is good is my rebooking of SummerSlam 92. And I'm oh, excited yeah. to see yours. You're a little wild card. I don't know what's going to come out of that fucking twisted head of yours. <laughs> um, I, I can, say I that... Fun stuff, man. Let's go match by match. We'll, we'll go... You do match by first. match, you want to go? Okay. Yeah, All you right. do one, I'll do one. And we'll, we'll go like that so this doesn't drag out to a whole episode sure. on its own. Uh, why don't you lead us off then? Uh, SummerSlam 1992, the opening match on the original card. And, and we both... Some of the criteria, let's get into our criteria. Um the they had to be a wwe wrestler or a free agent if you wanted them on their card yeah they had to be active like they couldn't be injured all that stuff right like we we kept it as legit as we could and we also kept it so what do you count hogan as at this point then i got him as inactive inactive yeah if you put him on your card like i'm not gonna argue you about it so so because hulk hogan hulk hogan in his book said that he sold out this show so (laughs) i know I, know. Um, I I recently read this. Do you see this thing? This there's a guy started a Twitter page that is uh, just he is dedicated to the lies that uh, Hulk Hogan is told. It's, it's hilarious. He's never going to run out of contact. <laughs> uh, the only other right, criteria what, that we had is we kept it to eight matches because that was what was the televised card as well. Okay, I didn't even know that was criteria. That was just common sense to me. I yeah, we just we anyways, talked about yeah. it earlier. Uh, so the opening contest in the original SummerSlam was Money Inc. versus the Legion of Doom, with the uh, yeah. Legion of Doom going over in 15 minutes. Uh, what did you open your show with? I opened with one of two number one contendership matches on my card, Ooh. and this is a number one contendership match a match for the World Championship, for the Ooh. WWE Championship, and we are we are going the Ultimate Warrior versus Mister Perfect. Bringing Perfect back a little early, eh? I am. I'll allow, and, and the winner gets to go ahead and uh, face the cha- face the champion uh, at an upcoming show, probably prime time or something. Yeah, I got Mr. Perfect going over in a ch- in, a, in, in a cheating vic- victory. Fair, fair. To continue uh, with you, yeah. Uh, interesting, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, and then Warrior would go on to get suspended and fired very shortly. So mm-hmm. uh, probably better that you put Perfect over. Exactly. I've got, uh, I actually kept the opening match the exact same. I, I kept LOD versus Money Inc. with LOD going over. Now, did you book Hawk to be sober? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> did nothing Let it happen. roll. Let it roll, brother. <laughs> did you change anything with the match? Nothing? No. I, I thought this match was fine for what it was. Uh, All right. I Yeah. I mean, obviously, it could have been a little bit better, but I mean, to open the show with oh what a rush and LOD coming out on the motorcycles. It's pretty hot opening. You know, the crowd LOD's over enough. Money Inc. is solid workers. These are two mm-hmm. bigger name talents on, on the roster at this time. So I, I thought this was a fine opener and I, I kept it the same. Now I did quite a change to this match. Originally I wasn't going to, but I, I did quite the tweaking to this match. And this is my second of two number one contendership matches. Well, before you say it, the second match on the actual card was Nails oh, defeating sorry. Virgil. Yeah. Uh, and you also, so now you have a number one contender match for, for which number title? For the, for the uh, WWF Tag Team Championships. Okay. Okay. The winner faces the Natural Disasters later tonight. Ooh. Mm-hmm. So uh, for those who remember, Natural Disasters shouldn't even be champions right now. I, they they beat they beat Money Inc. a few weeks ago in a stupid thing they, where they turned face because Jimmy Hart went so dumb. Yeah. But anyways, they were champions. So uh, later tonight they're going to defend against the winners of this match, and this match is a six team gauntlet match. Oh, look at you creating new things in 1992. I know this has never happened before 1992, so we're doing it. So the opening team is high energy. We got Coco Beware and Owen Hart taking on the Beverly Brothers. Nice. I love the Beverly Brothers. High Energy and Beverly High, uh, high Energy takes care of Beverly Brothers in, in just a few minutes. High Energy uh, uh, now goes up against the Nasty Boys. High Energy beats the Nasty Boys. Ooh, upset. Then we have a, uh, speaking of upset, we have a brand new, not debuting because they came out a few weeks ago. This is like their second match ever but we have the head shrinkers coming out and the head shrinkers beat high energy mm-hmm. money inc comes out next and beats the head shrinkers mm-hmm. 
And then those motorcycles hit up. Those motorcycles come out. The LOD comes out as the last match. It's LOD and Money, Inc. They go the longest of anybody. And Money, Inc. beats the Legion of Doom. Fair. To um, become the number one contendership for the titles. I had a couple things I might tweak on this if I were doing it. Mm-hmm. I think I might have had the head shrinkers in the high energy spot. If you're debate, debuting them. Maybe put a little I, shine I, on I, them. I gave a lot. I'm just no one. I'm just no no a no one mark. So I wanted Fair. to give him a little something that they never did for him back then. Fair. But I, yeah, yeah, that that makes sense to me as well. I like the uh, I like the excuse of of getting the Beverly Brothers on the card. Still, I actually put thought to doing Beverly Brothers against LOD on this card. Well, but, let's uh, be honest. The, the Beverly Brothers were great. They were. They were match, coming to the their end. Their match at Natural Disasters just was just it was a disaster. It, it sucked. Yeah, hey, I see what you did there. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't. I don't hate it at all. For for my second match on the card, I have Nails taking on the Big Boss Man. Actually, mm. so uh, Nails was is Boss Man new. with the company. Okay, yeah. Well, I... Nails debuted and destroyed the Boss Man. So right, yeah, during yeah. this time, Boss Man was doing an injury angle. Uh, I have Nails going over. I didn't decide if I wanted him to go over clean or by count out because yeah. the the Boss Man just came back too soon. You right. know what I mean? Because he's selling yeah. the injury, the beating that he took, but he just wanted to get his hands on nails. I figure you put nails over strong here, and then it builds to their nightstick match that they would end up having at Survivor Series. Sure. And yeah. it gets Virgil off the card. So, uh, yeah, I'm yeah, all it's, for it. It's fine with me. Yeah. Uh, the next match on the actual card was the best match ever, Rick Martel versus Shawn Michaels, where you could not punch your opponent in the face. Was it? I thought they were the fourth match. They were the it third was... match. Oh, okay. I counted wrong. All right, cool. So what do you got for your next match? Um, I put the Undertaker versus Papa Shango in a casket match. Nice. Just because nice. they work so well together. Um, I think they would have a fun casket match. And I think the UK crowd, the Wembley crowd, deserves a, a spectacle like that that night. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I went with something very different here. Uh, about two weeks before this pay-per-view started, or maybe, yeah, about two or three weeks before this pay-per-view aired, we had the debut of a certain superstar named Razor Ramon. Oh, shit. And uh, I'm actually pushing his debut to this card. Okay. So we're going to get the debut of Razor Ramon going up against El Matador Tito Santana. Fuck off. And, oh, that's beautiful. I love that. And I Good got beauty. Razor going over, and it really just establishes Razor right off the hop, beating Tito Santana. Even though he was doing the Amador gimmick, and even though he's coming to the end of his run, guy still had a big name, and, and with Razor getting put over him, it keeps it books Razor really strong. I like that. I like the lot. Yeah, so I thought you have I thought you might like that one. Uh, next on the original card was our WWF Tag Team Championship match, a natural disaster defeating the Beverly Brothers. What do you got on your card? Um, this is where I put Rick Martel versus Shawn Michaels, and I did not change a goddamn thing. Nothing. Right. Nothing gets changed. Uh, for me, I actually also had a number one contender match on my card for the WWF Ooh. World Heavyweight Championship. Okay, what do you do? I had the Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> going one on one with the nature boy Ric Flair. Okay. And I'm I really have, interested in what you have going on later. Okay. I have Ric Flair going over, yeah. recreating the WrestleMania 5 finish that uh Rick Rude and Bobby Heenan with Warrior. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because Bobby Heenan used to be Mr. Perfect's manager, and Mr. Yeah. Perfect learned that from Bobby Heenan. And I would have Bobby yeah. put that over commentating. I taught him that move. And, uh, you know, protects Warrior because you want to keep him strong. It gives Flair a win. You know, uh, not too long after the show, only a couple weeks later, Flair is your world champion again. So kind of keeps that on course again. I'd I'd like to get the belt towards Flair. And beating the Warrior, albeit with that bullshit, I think is a great way to keep some heat on Flair. I like it. That would take us to the next match on the actual card, which is Crush defeating the Repo Man. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, that, that, that's that's kind of funny because you know what I have in this in in, in yeah right. Eh? Uh, what I have in this spot is my cool down match. I think I, I think it's time to cool down a bit huh? uh, before you get into the heavy because my next three matches are all high profile matches. So my cool down is Crush versus the Mountie. Like it. I like it. Um, just the Mountie. Listen, I have nothing against Billy D. Okay, <laughs> nothing against Billy D. All, but 
I love me some Jacques Rougeau. Well, yeah. Well, no, I, no you, Barry me, Darso. I, I, Barry Darso I, I, was repo. Oh, Bar Bar sorry. I always mix those guys up. Come on. You took away our demolition fight with Crush and Smash. Uh, yeah. Um, I just think I just think uh, Jacques Rougeau is a better wrestler, and I think he can get a better show with a Crush. That's all. Yeah, I like it. I like and it. And this is Kona Crush, right? Yes. Fun, fun stuff. Great music. Great music. Uh, I This is where I put Shawn Michaels versus Rick Martel, and I kept it the exact same as well. Of course you did. Because that match is fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, next on the main card was our WWF world title match, the Ultimate Warrior defeating Randy Savage by Countout. What do you what, was Was Taker and Kamala this late in the card? Yeah, it was semi-main. Wow. wow. Well, it was a cool, cool down match, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, what All did right. you go with here? Uh, this is also my world title match, uh, but it's Ric Flair take, getting his rematch from WrestleMania 8 uh, against Rick, uh, against Randy Savage. Cool. Uh, who do you got going over? Uh, due to a lot of kerfuffle from Bobby Heenan and Mr. Perfect and uh, maybe a bit more going on, uh, Ric Flair squeaks out the victory. Ric Flair becomes champion again and uh, sets up a story of him and Mr. Perfect being at odds with Mr. Perfect being the number one contendership now for his title. I like it. Uh, very good booking there. I, I very much enjoy that. I also had my world title match here and I had I'm your curious. WWF. I had your WWF. Well, I, I kind of, I didn't hate the baby face, baby face dynamic of warrior. So I, I went with a babyface match as well, and I have your WWF World Champion, Macho Man Randy Savage, defending his title against The Undertaker. Hmm. Now there's backstory here, and I would probably have Savage playing subtle heel throughout this as well, because okay. there's bad blood between these guys, because The yeah, Undertaker was one of the guys that wrecked Macho Man's wedding. And Macho yeah, Man hasn't they... forgot that. But... But Macho also stopped Jake from killing Elizabeth. You Taker think that would did. make them even? Yeah, that's the story. It's, that's Ma it's Macho Take Man, though. He's crazy as fuck. Yeah, he's crazy. And just because you might have turned over a new leaf doesn't mean I forgive you. Uh, I would have The Undertaker winning by disqualification. I like I'd, have, that. I'd have Savage maybe hit him with a chair or something mm -hmm. like that, just because, yeah. you know. I, but I would have Taker strong here. Like Savage is getting himself intentionally disqualified to save his title. I like that. That's where I would go with that. Uh, and then, of course, in the real card, we had the Undertaker defeating Kamala in the semi-main event. And uh, what do you got? I have Money Inc. Uh, defeating the Natural Disasters to become once again the role the, the WWF Tag Team Champions. Oh, we have the Natural Disasters in the same place in our card. Ooh. I have a six-man tag booked, and it is the Natural Disasters and a mystery partner going up against the Mountie and the Nasty Boys. Like that. Mystery partner. Wait, wait, wait. Say, wait isn't that... Okay. Very, very similar to what they had in the Dark Match, right? Similar, yeah. Yeah. But the mystery partner... Well... He ain't playing the bagpipes on my show, brother. It, okay, I wasn't sure if Roddy was with the company or not, so he didn't hey, make it on my show. Roddy was on the card, so instead of having him come Wasn't out, he? he played oh, the bagpipes. He Remember, he just yeah. came out and played the bagpipes yeah, randomly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. instead of coming out and playing the bagpipes randomly, I'm going to have him come out and do three minutes and a couple eye pokes. Yeah, and if I if I would have realized that, you would have been in every match. <laughs> well, I figure if the natural disaster, your tag champions here that are struggling to probably connect and get over, let Piper give him a rub and try it, you know? I love that. Love it. And I think it's pretty safe to say that all three of our main events are the same with Brett <laughs> and the Bulldog. Any, anybody who would change this main event is high. Can I yeah. tell you something? I, so I, uh, to prepare for this, I wanted to uh, get some, whoops. I wanted to get some background info on uh on uh SummerSlam. So I was listening to the Sean Mooney podcast. Ah, how was that? Um he had a great show. Him him and Hacksaw Jim Duggan do that podcast together. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um it used to be it used to be Sean's by himself and then and then Hacksaw came in now they do it. It's them together now. It's still called Prime Time with Sean Mooney and Hacksaw Jim, Jim Duggan. But anyways they did uh they did a show on SummerSlam 92. And did you know 
originally SummerSlam 92 was slated to be in Washington, D.C. I did know that it wasn't originally supposed to be in the United Kingdom. And the main event was to be Warrior and and, uh, and Savage. Yes, well, that's how they promoted on TV, even with Wembley. Exactly. Now, here's the thing. They had two main events. In the States, your main event was Warrior Savage. In the UK, your main event is, is, is Brett Bulldog. History will go and show you, there's not a person on the planet. I don't care what country you live in, Canada or Uganda. Your main event is Brett and Bulldog. <laughs> I don't think that a lot of people could name you more than Bretton Bulldog matches that were on this entire pay-per-view. Because it wasn't a great pay-per-view. It was not. It wasn't. This is a two-match card. Yeah. It's 100% a two-match card. Well, not the um, way we rebooked it. Which, no, I think we both came up with stellar cards tonight. Yeah, you know, <laughs> mine slightly better than yours, but not by much. Not by much. Man, maybe, maybe we should bring back our, what was our show we called? our rebooking show no we didn't have that wasn't us never mind (laughs) we had our we had our fantasy show we had a fantasy show i'm i'm no more of the no more of the moonshine oh my god i I forgot that we're not uh tyrone and uh (laughs) jay oh gotta love those boys um yeah real quick too uh is that retiring this friday i think he retires I think there's a good chance. I mean, Ron, I mean, I, I don't know. Did Ron Hutchinson say that or did somebody, or did he say something that resembled that and somebody took it and flew with it? You know what I mean? I, I heard he uh, might've said it to somebody in private. Yeah. So who knows? I don't know. We, I don't think you will know until, <laughs> un, until this Friday. Do you know um, what I think? Do you know what I think happened? Is I think I, Edge was under the impression that SummerSlam was going to be in Toronto this year. And I oh. think that's why he announced last year I want to retire in Toronto next summer. Everybody knew he wanted to retire in Toronto. But the thing is, if they were actually pulling the trigger on this, out of respect for Edge, you'd think they would be doing a build-up. Unless like Edge didn't would, want that. Maybe he didn't. But the, like, maybe, also, maybe, he's working Sheamus, which is going to be an awesome match. But would Sheamus so you, be, so, unless Edge picked it himself? So what do you say? Sheamus goes over, and then... I swear to God, if he pull, if he fucking leaves his boots in the ring, I'm going to throw something at the fucking TV. I'm so over that shit. <laughs> want to pull the Billy guy? The Cody Rhodes? Oh, the Co- they're just, they, they, I'm going to call it the AEW. Every, I guarantee when Dustin's done, he does that. Guarantee. If he, fucking tea. I don't think Dustin finishes up in AEW. Though. I think he comes back to WWF. He just signed a new contract. No, he didn't. His contract's coming to an end. No, he just signed a new contract. Like, I swear to fuck. Recently? I read it less than, less than a week ago. I heard his contract was coming to an end, and he was like, probably leaving. You, you start your list, and I'm going to get to the bottom of this. My list is the top seven British Bulldog career moments. Eh, maybe matches. Who knows? I can do whatever I want. It's my list. But I don't want to pay some homage uh, matches, to the British we, Bulldog. Matches are moments. I, I always throw matches into my moments. Yeah, so it's and- fun. This is kind of a throwback because one of our pilot episodes, I actually did the top seven British Bulldog matches of all time. We're going to release that uh, because he was being inducted into the Hall of Fame. And I actually found my notes, my original counted out notebook I found today. And I, <laughs> I found the list, but uh, I would really like to air that episode. But Mike won't let me air any of the pilot episodes that we show. Fuck. All right. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Uh, Well, let's get into the list. How about we talk about my number seven? You know, there was two people that had a great showing at the Royal Rumble 1995. And the British Bulldog was one of them. And I I, I think that it deserves a little bit of shine. I think Sean gets all the the grandiose of that show. But but Bulldog, man, he pulled on a performance. Yeah. And, you know, everyone just talks about the Sean show, the Sean show. David Boy Smith, very underrated Royal Rumble performer. He had a couple Final Four appearances, a couple you know long why, showings. Though? Do you know why? Because he's been <laughs> the best Royal Rumble promo of all time. But yeah, I wanted to give a little bit of love to the the British Bulldog in uh, in the 1995 Royal Rumble. Start things off. I went back and forth between that and his Hall of Fame induction. And I mean, like, I don't know. The Hall of Fame induction is just kind of like whatever to me. 
I'd rather just Listen, if he if he was you know there, <laughs> it might be worth talking about. But no, I think you made the right choice here. Number six, we're going to go back to uh, a show that the WWF ran at the Royal Albert Hall, and it's Davy Boy Smith winning the Royal Albert Battle Royal. Yeah, this was cool. fun. I went back and rewatched. Yeah. I'm not this. a ma- I'm not a massive Battle Royal guy. Like I, I like Battle Royals when they're really good. This was a good one. This one was really good. <laughs> yeah, they did the the final three was Typhoon, uh, the Mountie, and the Bulldog, and they had the two on one spot, which I really like, and Bulldog overcame the odds. And then the post match was cool. Earthquake came out, and they were laying out the Bulldog, and Andre the Giant came out for the save and gave Bulldog the rub. But uh, I love seeing him get some shine in the United Kingdom. You know, I uh, because he technically was signed with the company, I, I almost uh, had Andre come out and uh, and be the uh, the guy that saved Savage in the main of, in, in that match. I almost had that happen, but I'm like, then it's like, where do you go from there? Yeah. Well, you I know, mean, so. Andre just kind of did whatever in 91, yeah. 92. Uh, we're going to get to my first real match on the list here for my number five. And it is a match that I, I think it might be maybe the second greatest match in the Bulldogs career. Who I think I know where you're going here. And I'm really upset. This is your number five. This is like my number two or three. Uh, no, you don't know where I'm going then. Cause I don't think you've ever watched this match. Okay. It's the then, British then, Bulldogs then, then versus Joe and Dean Malenko. No, I've never watched this match. <laughs> I have been but, but yelling you're also at wrong. you it's for not, three years. It's not the second greatest match in his career, though. It is. It's better That's than Canadian not. Stampede. That's not his greatest match either. His second? Talk, uh, Bulldog and Owen in Germany. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. This one's up there for me. Nah, man. This... Bulldog and Owen in Germany is one of my favorite matches of all time. This match is one of the best tag team matches I've ever watched in my entire life. And I will not classify anybody to be a real wrestling fan if they don't oh, watch it. No, no, listen, you. wait, let me finish the sentence. Let me finish the sentence. It's not going where you think. That, it's no, not, that was a shot at no, me. No, it's not going where you think it's going to go. I do not think that I will not classify anybody as a real wrestling fan. If you have not watched this no. match, you have no credibility oh, whatsoever. I'm not listen, let me finish my sentence. I do not classify you as a real wrestling fan if oh. you watch this match and say I'm bored by it because this is a technical masterpiece. <laughs> and you're also not a wrestling fan if you haven't watched it yet, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is one of my favorite matches of all time. Oh. Number four. I didn't know how to pick a moment from this, so I'm just saying the Heart Foundation. Yeah, I like, mean... He wasn't the focal point he, of it, but this, he was a no. But it was really, it. it really was a resurgence in his career, though. Mm-hmm. His tag team with Owen was phenomenal, but it could only go so far. And I kind of like, group all that in together. Camp, like camp, camp Camp Cornette was coming to an end, right? Like, yeah. like while well, Yoko was gone, like yeah. So there was they couldn't go much farther than that, anyways. What do you do if they would have broke? Let, let, let's say the Heart Foundation stuff isn't happening, right? They're not going to do that story. They break up um, Camp Cornette. They break up Owen and Bulldog. I think Owen goes on to be to have a very, to continue what was a very successful uh, uh, singles career before his tag team. I think Bulldog gets lost in the shuffle. Yeah. Bulldog was a main inventor, a main contender, a main everything. Five, six years prior to this. In 1997, 1998, I think they're going other directions. They're not looking at Bulldog. So Bulldog, so the Hart Foundation kept Bulldog relevant. Did the same thing for uh, did the same thing for Jim Neinhart. Yeah, Pillman as well, to that extent. Ah, Pillman was gonna be a star regardless. Pillman, you know, he never really got where he should have been in the WWE injury because, he of, was, because of his injuries. Yeah. But I mean, that's what kind of kept him relevant in the WWE was heart foundation. Right. I don't know. Uh, cause after the, cause after the heart foundation, he, he kept going on and, you know, well, I did great the, stories and he just stuff said, with the, gold he, dust and, he was always in the heart foundation though. Like, cause he died, but they were still going, but like, you yeah, know, so. Coleman was doing good stuff, but like I put him the same as the bulldog. I think, I think the Heart Foundation kept all those guys like they just all clicked together 
And and it really was, as Brett says, one heart beating or, you know, five guys with one heart beating as one, whatever that sentence yeah, yeah. is. Like, yeah. but, but, you know, like you take his tag team with Owen, like family, like all that stuff. I kind of just, I couldn't just figure out how to put it on the list. So just grouped it all together. He is. His tag team with Owen. Um, I'm glad they kept doing that in the Heart Foundation, by the way. Yeah, but it too. was but it was different. You know, it it wasn't Camp Cornette anymore. You so might they, have they, they had a different dynamic. I like. You that. might have two belts, Bulldog, but you don't have two slams. Two slams. I love it. Uh, uh, one of my favorite tag teams of all time, by the way. Uh, Bulldog and Owen will always be. That's why. That's why I, I I fought so hard with you on your best tag team wrestlers list because I wanted Owen on there so bad. Uh, because of that team and Owen's team with Yoko, which is t- to this day one of my favorite things he's ever done. A uh, very underrated team, him and Yoko. Yeah, but him, but also underrated. I can't believe I'm calling him and Bulldog underrated, but I do think they're underrated. I really they definitely they definitely get forgotten and slept on for sure. Hundred percent. But they they because they were in an era where tag team wrestling wasn't the focal point of the company by any means. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was great. They they were phenomenal together. They were a fun team. Well, my number three is focusing on a time when tag team wrestling was taken seriously. And that's, uh, we're going back to WrestleMania 2. Winning the tag team championships against the Dream Team, the British Bulldogs. Huge moment. One of the big marquee matches on the second WrestleMania. Uh, I believe it might have been a main event in one of the, or I can't remember if it was a main event or the opener. I think it was the first match or second match in LA. I don't remember now. Uh, it It was one of the top four matches on WrestleMania, though. Sure. Because they had the football battle royal, the cage match, Piper and Mr. T, and then this match. Mm-hmm. Great finish, too. I uh, just one of the highlights of a okay, not great WrestleMania. Terrible WrestleMania. Okay. <laughs> I was just being <laughs> I was being nice. No, absolutely awful WrestleMania. One of the worst <laughs> of all time. Maybe the worst WrestleMania of all time. But they were coming to the ring by Lou Albano and Ozzy Osbourne, so that's cool. True enough. And yeah, man, you know, the tag team titles were a big deal at this point. The Dream Team had a good run, and and mm-hmm. the Bulldogs took those belts and really did something special with them for, for about nine months. Number two will make you happy. Okay. The, the team of Brett and Owen? Or, fuck, Bulldog and Owen? I kind of just count them with the Heart Foundation. Oh, okay. Brett and o- Bulldog and Owen in Germany? You got it. Number two. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. It had to be. Oh, I'm so be. happy. Well, it's the inaugural European okay, okay. tournament. Okay, so, so, oh, so you count this as his best match then? No, I don't think this is his best match. I think this is a huge moment in his oh, okay. career. Okay, I see. Uh, if you're going for pure match, I I may I, think... I do think it's it's one of my favorite... Like, it's up there. You, everybody knows, uh, you especially knows, that my favorite match of all time is, is, uh, is Bret and Austin. I put Brett and Austin here. Well, look at Owen. It's like here, man. It's like, it's tight. This is a phenomenal match. And I, I'd say it's his second best singles match. I, I'd I think, say. I, I think it's Owen's best one-on-one match. No, him and Brett at Mania 10, I think is better than this. Oh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I, I would say that this yeah. is both of their second best singles matches. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and both of their Agreed. best matches are with Brett. <laughs> which Yeah. Is, Pretty cool. The cool as much as I talk about Bret Hart, the he's man in all of your favorite matches. He's, he's in all, all of your favorite my matches. favorite matches. He really he is. is. Your, Bret Hart is your favorite. I hate wrestler. that so much. I'm like, uh, I because I I talk so much shit about him. I hate him so much that I start like listening. It doesn't matter what our category is: WrestleMania, uh, uh, fucking SummerSlam, just wrestling matches in general. <laughs> yeah, I just list so many fucking uh, uh, Bret Hart matches. And it sucks because my favorite year in wrestling is 1997. Heart and that man, that man is all over that year. He's the MVP of 1997, man. 100%. Buddy, you are a Bret Hart mark. <laughs> Bret Hart, Sam Punk, and Kenny Omega so are your favorite much. wrestlers. <laughs> uh, yeah, this match is incredible. I, I do really want you at some point, 
just fucking watch that tag team match, all right? Like now, like here's the it, problem. It's become it's become the OIW reviews thing. Yeah, where you've told me about it so many times where I just don't want to do it. But here's the problem: is that like this match will now not live up because I've hyped it up so much, and and I've just it, it won't live up to it because like I don't know what standards I've built it to in your head now. But like, if you would have watched it three years ago, you would have told me this is one of the best <laughs> matches you ever watched in your entire. Fucking Which is exactly life. how I feel about it. OS. What is it? OSI. OSW o- reviews. OSW reviews. Oh <laughs> man, that will live There's... up to your expectations. Okay, here, here's this is how I describe OSW reviews. Do you know how like everybody on the planet talks about Brooklyn Nine Nine, and they're like, yeah. "This is the funniest show on the planet. You have to watch it." To the point where you don't want to watch it because it, it's like, well, this can't be. And then you watch it and you're like, yo, this show is fucking hilarious. But it is fucking, it's not the funniest show on the planet. No, but it lives up to the expectation. Like, it, like, it was overhyped to me and it and it lived up to it. It, it was overhyped to me. It, it lived up to the hype. I mean, it's not the funniest show on the fucking no, planet. But, but yes, it's, it's, it's fucking awesome show. Yes, yes. That is All right. Brooklyn All right. Nine-Nine. OSW Reviews is the Brooklyn Nine-Nine to that. Okay. All right. That's and they're fucking funny. <laughs> they are just and they they love impact wrestling and they just like they did a whole story arc. So like they just like pick arcs. So the show started because this is a sidebar here, guys, before I get to number one. OSW reviews started chronologically doing all the WWF pay-per-views during Hulk Hogan's run. And they fucking they ended up like watching and be like, yo, Hulk Hogan's a cunt. And they started calling him cunt Hogan. <laughs> was his nickname for the whole time like oh fucking cunt hogan must pose like and they just oh that's amazing apart. so then they finished them all and they're like all right let's do another story arc and then they just started doing arcs they've done the lex express they did uh, they love black rain from nwa oh, TNA. No. so they did a black rain thing and they are oh. so funny and then they have their like year end awards. I'm telling you, Mike, these guys were built for you. Okay, <laughs> they were built for you. All right, man. I am. I'm very curious what your number one. Very yeah. curious. Yeah, it's uh, it's a throwback to all of our booking of SummerSlam '92 because Brett and Bulldog is the clear number okay. one. That is the clear number one. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah, there's just I... so many moments. Ah. Uh. I mean, I, I'm not going to refute this. There's just Bulldog had such a story career that he did, you know, but he had a lot of weird shit in his career too. Like well, I looked at his you know WCW why, run. Why? Because he was bizarre. <laughs> That's one of my favorite moments. Like if you would have put that promo on your list, I wouldn't have argued. It's an honorable mention <laughs> for sure. It is. So that means I've got to open the show with the British Bulldog's going to win, whether you like it or not, and close the yeah. show with the bizarre with promo. Bizarre. Yes. Yeah, very I much so. so it is my it's one of my favorite things that has ever been produced by a wwf camera like it's just so that and remember the one what was it fuck like he he was like attacking it, he's in so many silly moments there's one where he attacks um i think Shawn michaels on the beach yeah yeah he and did that he did the mini movie with sting and the oh yeah wcw um the <laughs> part He's part of the shock, ma- the shock master's debut. He fucking fell. <laughs> he, he fell on his fucking arse. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he, he, also, laughter. he also had a tag team with the Mean Street Posse when he was wearing jeans. Oh, fuck. That was so bad. He uh, he yeah. got rock bottom into a pile of dog shit. I think they expected big things from that. Like when he came in, he was doing that. He came in. What? How did it happen? The screwdriver happened. He left. Went to WCW. Yeah, heard his back. That's that sucked. Then he came back and did the run with him in the jeans, right? Yeah. And I think they expected big things from the run of the jeans, and it just didn't fly. No. Uh his it last... wasn't our bulldog. Well, I, I think what's cool too though is like his last couple matches were teaming with Harry. No, oh, okay, years later. No, nah, I mean he don't he died what, two thousand three or four, right? Harry was wrestling then? He was very young. He was like 17, Ooh. 18. Okay. But uh they were they did a couple indie matches together as a tag team and and there was talks of both of them coming and doing a run with the WWE when he passed away. Okay. Uh the last thing I remember uh, of him in WWE, he didn't he have a he had a couple of runs with the hardcore title, yeah? 
Yeah, same. Yeah, he had a. He came back. He came back. That's how he did. He came back and uh, won the hardcore title. Gave it back to Al Snow, mm-hmm. and then he gave Stephanie McMahon amnesia. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he had a little run with Triple H. He had uh, a little program with The Rock where he got rock bottom into dog shit. As much as nineteen ninety eight is one of my or nineteen ninety seven is my favorite year in wrestling. Nineteen ninety nine, not great. <laughs> Not great. That's where Fuck. that's where WCW turns all, around to the shit and WWF was all you idiots who sit there going, the attitude era was so great. I missed the attitude era. Go back and watch wrestling in 1999. It's not great. It was fucking horrible. It's not great. Oh. Uh, it's funny. I was at a, a family function last week and we were talking about like how the world is a lot more sensitive now than it used to be. And my mom was like, oh, my God, when you're in high school, you just run around and tell everyone, suck it, suck it, suck it. She's like, the amount of times that you told me to suck it. She's like, and I don't even think you knew what you were talking about. I'm like, I didn't. I was in grade seven, man. Like, But but again, why are people using this as justification? My kid told me to suck it right now. I punt him across the fucking living room. <laughs> Everybody is sucking it in 97, yeah, 98. Well, and now that we're in the year 2023, ain't nobody sucking it for me. Well, speaking of the year 2023, I hate you so much. Uh, speaking of the year 2023, that brings me to a segue. Um, I'm going to tell you what my next list is going to be. Oh, yeah. You haven't told me this yet. You're going to surprise me on air. Ooh. No, I don't. <laughs> I just want to talk about it on air because, yeah, that's fun. Um, I... I don't know, like I don't know if it's gonna be next week or the week after because we have a bunch of interviews to do. We have a lot of people coming on the show in the next few weeks, uh, from indie guys from all the shows we're working to a couple surprises that we haven't told you guys about. Uh, some big names that we've been uh, kind of holding out on you. So it, it could be next week. It could not be next week. But my next list, the next time that I do a list on this show, I've been thinking about something, man. That's scary. 1992, since because we were working on the the SummerSlam thing, is actually one of my favorite years in wrestling. I think Did 92 you? is a great year, especially for the WWF. But I was even, I, you know, it's looking at some WCW stuff too. And WCW, WCW was great. awesome in 1992. Thank you. 92 is a great year. Another one of my low key favorite years is 1994. 94 had some fun stuff going mm-hmm. on. There, we're just getting into that new generation stuff, mm-hmm. uh, which which was really fun. However, 1993, <laughs> kind of the 1999 of professional wrestling. Yeah, not the greatest year for either company. So, since we're 30 years past 1993, what I decided to do, I want to see what's salvageable from that year. So, I'm digging up the good stuff, and I'm going to do a list of the top seven best. Pay per view matches from 1993. Sweet. I'm going to see what holds up from 30 years ago. Are you doing WWF and WCW? Any anything that did pay per view. Love it. I don't know if uh, uh, if New Japan was doing a lot of pay per view back then, but if it was on if it was on pay per view, I'm doing it. Sweet. Yeah, uh, I want to see. I want to see what we can dig up from 1993. Uh, terrible Royal Rumble. Good match with the Steiner brothers. Bretton Razor had a good one. WrestleMania 9, ooh, butt head shrinkers and Steiner Brothers. Ooh. I'll tell you right now, WCW has some sleepers, man. Yes, they do. Uh, yes, good sir. stuff with Steven Regal in 1993. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. May I suggest giving a very good watch to SummerSlam 93, the Steiner Brothers versus the Heavenly Bodies? You don't have to tell me that. Okay, good, because not a lot of people, like, I didn't know if you were <laughs> one of the smart ones that knew I, that match was amazing. I lo- Can I tell you something? I fucking love the Heavenly Bodies. As you should. As you should. There's there, there are two tag teams that people sleep on, man. The Heavenly Bodies, the Beverly Brothers. Why do people sleep on these tag teams so much? Beverly Brothers and AEW as a destruction crew were awesome. I'm going to throw well done in there, too. All right. Now you lost me. <laughs> your your idea was well done until you mentioned that. <laughs> Um, well, so, so I, good, good list, man. Uh, great, great, great homage to uh, to the to the British Bulldog. I will, um, I will bury the lead. Uh, yeah. as we are releasing this, check out our YouTube page. Uh, our good friend, Mr. Coca Cola Content, will we he's sitting down with Eddie Edwards uh, as we're recording this tomorrow morning. So, as we release this now, 
So check out our YouTube page for his chat with uh, Eddie Edwards. And if you don't do that and you're only listening on Spotify, we'll play it on next week's episode. Now we're sitting on another interview. Are you going to release that uh, before then, or do you, or are we going to keep that in? Now nah, we'll keep that one. Is that a little 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 tidbit surprise for them later on. In the next couple of weeks, I'll I'll Dude. say who the name is, and I'll release it in the next couple of weeks. How about that? Good enough, man. I had the opportunity to sit down with former member of the Wyatt family, Eric Redbeer Rowan, for a fun little chat. Mm-hmm. Which uh, I don't think you've heard that one yet, have you? I have not. I've yet to hear that. I do. You you called me. I, I, that was just a, it was a surprise for me. You called me and be like, "Hey, I just talked to, to Eric Redbeard." <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> I knew I knew he was doing that Comic Con, but you never told me you were going. Yeah, it was a last minute thing. Yeah. So that that that's cool. And uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get uh, we'll get a couple of words from a couple of people at the Destiny Show. Lots of names at the Destiny Show this this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, a lot of cool content for uh, uh, for you guys coming up. Uh, the best way to know that it's hitting you is if you hit that little fucking subscribe button at the bottom. Yeah, subscribe, we want those subscribes. You'll get those notifications every time we hit, a, hit you with an interview. Hit those subscribe buttons. Tell your friends. Tell your grandma especially your grandma. She's hot. I like her. Tell her to subscribe. Uh, everybody, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Repeat. Just just keep doing it, please. We need those subscriptions, uh, especially on YouTube, but do it on uh, do uh, hit reviews on uh, Spotify and iTunes. Give us all the love you can give us. Tell your friends about us. Tell your neighbors about us. Uh, count it out. We're going to be everywhere you are really soon. We are going live September 9th. A back to school, uh, Barry, Barry wrestling, uh, Ferris, Ferris drive, Ferris drive. Yeah. We are the pre-show at back to school. If you've never experienced, uh, any of our weird Instagram live shows before they get weird, man. They, <laughs> we will, we're, we're, we're a couple kooky guys. Now we can't go for two hours like we go on Instagram. We're only gonna have like <laughs> or, 20 minutes. Or we can't drink 20 beers. <laughs> we also can't drink 20 beers. But I promise you it's gonna be just as fun. Um, you never know what's gonna happen when you give me a live mic. I'm All I'm gonna say. We're gonna be All escorted from Barry Wrestling. I'm gonna lose my <laughs> announcing job. And Rock Solid Wrestling's already I, got I've a damn got good announcer. To lose. <laughs> oh fuck. Well, with that said, anything else left to, left to say? No, all right, good enough. Until next week, when uh, who knows what we're coming up with? We're going to come up with something real good for next week. We love you. Um, by the next time we see you, we will talk about the the uh, outcomes. The the I want to say, uh, yeah, the outcome. Let's say of two phenomenal indie shows, Rock Solid Wrestling and Destiny Wrestling. We'll talk about all of that next week. Until then, on behalf of my boy right over there, we have been counted out. Yo, bazaar.